Hello there, praise King Jesus. How are you? Hope you had a beautiful night. And I know and I'm believing you're going to have a beautiful day. Um, joy chosen as always, and I'm so very, very much blessed to be talking to you today. <coughs> and today I just had a person yesterday where I had a friend and this friend was so complaining to me like a lot. And she was like, God, I've worked for you all this time long. And these guys who have just come into salvation are getting miracles like nothing. Yet me, I've looked for you and searched for you for all this time long. But I've prayed for one thing, you've not even wrote it. Let me tell you something. In the Bible, the story of the political son, I believe you know it. Those who read the Bible, for you who do not read the Bible, please get your Bible because it is our life money. So uh, this this story, this parable that Jesus narrated to the disciples was like, this guy was, uh, there was a man and he had two children, like two guys. So one was like, dad, give me my inheritance, like my my things. And so me, I can go because you anytime you're dying and all that. So give me the things before you die so I can enjoy now. The dad wasn't bad and he gave the guy the things and he went out in the world to enjoy the life. So as he was still there enjoying the life and all that, his life was really bad. At first it was good as some people are enjoying life and you think they are very well off. But at a point, a point reached and this, this guy lost everything. Like the money was done because he used to use girls and all that. The money was consumed in just minutes. So uh, he thought of uh, coming back to the father. And he's like, my father has a lot of servants. Why don't I go there and be like a servant and I eat on the leftovers? Really? Yet he was a son in the house of the father. But see what he's suggesting, he wants to eat left over. So he thinks about it, he comes back home. Remember, his other brother was home, he had stayed home for a long time. And uh, this guy was doing everything, everything that was required in the house was being done by him. Everything, housework, everything. So this guy comes back. The father looking, the father looked at him and he was so excited because he loved his son in spite of what had happened because yeah, if someone is young, they think as young people. So this guy comes back. What he expected his, his father to do is to shout at him, do what? But when he came back, even what the dad was not giving him before when he was still home, the dad was like, prepare a, a feast for him. Prepare a feast, do this and this, put him on this and this, let him put on well, like everything that you yearn for in this life was given to that guy when he came back. So this guy was, uh, he had gone to work off, he had gone to work out of the house, like in the field. Coming back, he saw the brother. And the dad told him to prepare the feast and he's like, Daddy, really, are you so serious about this point? Are you so serious about, your about what you're trying to say? And the dad was like, what's wrong? I've, the guy was like, I've been working for you all this time. I've been so faithful all this time. I've trusted you. And you've reached at a point of trusting me because of what I do all this time long. And you've never given me anything or you've never even appreciated me what I've done. If it is appreciated to me, say thank you, thank you, thank you, and it ends there. But this guy has come back, even ate your money, he took your money and spoiled it in girls and women and all that. But this is what you decided to do for him. Guess what the daddy's answer was? He was lost. Now he's back. But you, you already know that everything that I have belongs to you. Yeah, you may say, yeah, uh, it belongs to me, but where is it? Huh? I think that's the question you have. Because uh, this guy was already in the house, so the father knew, this one is mine. 
It's like dev, the devil torturing you, who is already a Christian. He doesn't torture those who are not Christians because he knows they belong to him. So if anything, he tortures them or not, they are his. So that's what also I have to tell you today. God, you belong to God. If he says you are the chosen race, the chosen nation, when they say nation, that you may, you may think it is Uganda or some other country where you are, because I say Uganda because I live in Uganda. So wherever you are, that nation, you are that nation, like they say, the church of God, the church of Jesus Christ. And people look at the buildings, come on. This is not all about the buildings. However smart it is, however beautiful it is, however, oh, everything it is, that is not the church of Christ. You are the church of Christ and you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit dwells to do what he has to do, what he wills in your life. So this is just an encouragement to those who are already Christians. Do not give up on God. Do not. Sometimes I was imagining the last time, yeah, and you see these people who race, huh? those who are in the race, you run, you run. When this guy is approaching the finishing line, he gets tired, yet he has been working for this all his time, practicing, training, he has done all that, only for one race. So you've also struggled a lot in Christ for one place. And you reach at the finishing point and you're like, I'm tired. But people keep on saying, please go, please go, please go, please go. But you, when you're feeling, I can't, I can't. But when you feel so encouraged, when someone comes, you can make it. As I'm telling you now, you can make it. Don't give up. Keep running. You're about to reach the finishing race. It is very disappointing when you get to a point where you're about to reach to the finishing line and you give up. And someone behind you passes you. Let me tell you a story. Yesterday, I was going somewhere, so we are boarding into a taxi. And I was moving just like that. The, the taxi had two seats remaining. So me, I was just lagging like that, going. I had not seen someone this side and someone this side. So when I realized I had one this side and one this side, and it was a car which had remained because I was on time, I read something ran in my mind, and I went to the taxi. So I and this lady this side we ran to catch the seats, and this one gave up, and she waited for the other taxi. So whatever you own, this is what I'm trying to bring up. Whatever I own, someone is waiting for it. When you don't care because you know you know it, you know you sing well, you know you preach well, you know you inspire people well, you know anything you art, you're good at, you're doing it well. Remember, there is someone behind you who wants the same position. Never take that position for granted because uh, I believe actually the Bible says every position that God puts you in, there is a grace for it. God is not looking for your ability, He's looking for your availability. Just avail yourself, position yourself into a position that you know what, God, here I am. No matter what is happening, when they say the joy of the Lord is my strength, it doesn't mean that every time has to be a good time. What really makes it the joy of the Lord is when you're weak. Actually, Paul says in the Bible that it is when I'm weak that I'm strong. For the grace of the Lord is so sufficient. Actually, he says, because sometimes, yeah, like some rich people, they may not see the need for God. But when you're poor, you have a need for God. That's why Jesus was like, the rich people will not enter into heaven. Basically, this is what it means. When you feel you're full of everything in life, you see no need of Jesus Christ. It's not being poor in money, no. You may be there and you're satisfied. Yeah, this, I'm, I'm enough. Never be contented. Never be. Like, be contented with what God has given you. But don't... 
Don't satisfy yourself with where you are, because God is taking you somewhere far. That is just the big action. He has not even yet started. But you think, yeah, I have it all. All the wings on me. Come on. No. He has not yet started on you. That is just... Actually, he has not yet started. Because when you get to know about what he's preparing for you, he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, Behold, I have good plans for you. Plans to prosper you never, never to harm you. So if you're there and you're like, God is angry at me, he cannot, he cannot do anything good for me. Him being quiet doesn't mean he's not quiet. Just be straight in the Lord. You see, we have registration. But a bit, a little tuning to, like this, to another station. Actually, you just roll it like this. And you fall into another, to another station. So, this is your life in Christ. When you decide to do like, oh, okay, okay, God, let me come back. Home. Just a minute. You're gone. You're gone. Actually, the Bible says somewhere that those who have ever tasted the grace, coming back is hard because you have to fight, fight, fight a lot. That's why those people who do not know God, when they come, God gives them a little road. He gives them everything. But you're like, God, I'm struggling. Because you've ever tasted the grace, you know how sweet the Father is. You know how sweet His love is. You know how great His mercy is upon your life. Because you, some of you, do, you don't have been there if it wasn't for the grace. You've not, you would have not even watched me if it wasn't for the grace. Because I come from too far. But if you was depending on where you come from to make you great, then I would be now. I would be now. Jesus was born here. You know I was born. But in that choral became a great where everyone, every celebrity, I was even wondering. Some of us want to meet great people, but when they speak, when you hear their speeches, it's like God is great. Yet you, you have him as your father, but you cannot recognize it. And you go back and oh, 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 come on. Know who you have. Know who you belong to. That's why people suffer because they do not know who they accepted as their Lord and Savior. If you get to know that this guy loves you so much, you would not be complaining. You would not be... Let me tell you a story. You know, stories teach us a lot. The earthly things teach us the heavenly things. That's what the Bible says. This guy was a missionary. Uh, uh, so he went to preach the gospel. 40 years of this country, he wasn't in his country. He left his kids very young. So he goes to preach. Coming back, the plane crashed. And it was only him who survived. But when the plane threw them, no one had, had, had ever been there. And no one knew that it wasn't even on the map. It was hard to sketch where he was. <coughs> He complained, how could you do this? I've served you for this time long, 40 years. Some of you are even in 20 years, but you're complaining. This guy was four, ten, yeah. How could you do this to me? How could you? Which kind of God are you as in? <laughs> so as was complaining, ah, you know, complaining to someone who doesn't answer you. So he kept quiet. Time passed, time passed, and time passed. And uh, he had got to kiss himself far a bit from his house. As he was finishing his job, he looked to his house and it had burnt. Everything was burnt instantly. Nothing was remaining because he had chopped all the grass around to build the house, so nothing was left to make another house. He complained still and he saw a plane come. So when the plane came, he asked them, how did you get to know that I was here? The guy told him, the smoke from that house, from those burnt things, actually they even didn't know what it was, from the burnt things, 
has given us a signal that there is some. So whatever happens in your life, may be a signal of something greater. Because when they came, they took him to, to his place. He saw his children, he was so happy. So everything that happens in life, take it as a lesson. Yeah, things happen, but when it happens again, that is no longer your level because you know how to go about it. So don't give up on God. That's what I have to tell you today. Do not. No matter who has what, who has what, you do not know how they get them. Some people are even on pulpits. They are ministers. The ones who inspire you, but you do not know how their life is with God. You do not know even whether what they have is from God. But you trust in God and He will never let you down. This is a prayer to those who want to get saved, to receive Christ as the Lord and Savior. Because he says, peace I give unto you, not as the Lord. You may not have what you want now, but the peace of Christ, the joy of the Lord, makes you stronger than the day. And you have the power to live that day. So say, dear Lord, I bless you for my life. Come into my life. Fill it to my heart. And save me. Wrap my name from the book of life and write it in the book of life. Save me today. I believe you as my Lord and Savior. And I, I will always proclaim it that you're Jesus Christ, my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. So decide to go to the churches near you. You may be in California, you may be in the USA, you may be anywhere you are, Canada, <laughs> Australia, anywhere Uganda. <laughs> so decide to go to a church near you and you will be blessed. I stay your children, God bless you.